Father, we thank you, Lord. God, we praise you. We love you, God. We thank you indeed for your blood, God. Your blood that saved us, my Lord Jesus. Your blood that protects us. Your blood that delivers us, my Lord Jesus. God, your blood that heals us, my Lord. And we just thank you so much, my Jesus. God, for shedding your blood on our behalf, my Lord. God, we come here today, Lord Jesus, to praise you, to worship you, my Lord God, to celebrate who you are, my Lord Jesus, to us, my God. And Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that we will never stop desiring to worship and to celebrate you. God, I pray that we will never stop praising you for the things that you have done for us, God, but that our first our first motive, my Lord Jesus, would be to simply praise you for who you are, my Lord God, our Savior, my Lord. And we thank you so much for that, God. Lord, have your way with each and every single one of us. Holy Ghost, run through our hearts, our minds, our souls, our body, our spirit right now. As we sit in this place, God, shut me up so that you could be uh, uh, heard, my Lord God, and just have your way with this service. There are people who are here that people who are listening my lord we just give you glory and all god's baby said hallelujah church y'all may be seated in the lord hallelujah god is good i know that's right thank you jesus i pray that you guys have had a uh, an awesome awesome week man praise the lord we are uh, blessed and honored to have you guys with us if you were here uh, for the potluck, then uh, uh, we thank you, man. We had a great time on uh, Wednesday night with that. Food was amazing. Fellowship was great. If you were not able to be here, yes, you did get talked about. But, uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we missed some of y'all, some of y'all not so much. But <laughs> praise the Lord. It was a good time. But uh, I pray uh, you guys are not going for the Philadelphia Eagles in uh, <clears throat> the Super Bowl. <laughs> praise the Lord. There was only one team from uh, Pennsylvania, and that is uh, Pittsburgh. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't even think that it should be called the state of Pennsylvania. It should be called the state of Pittsburgh. But, uh, but that's a whole other sermon. You know, sometimes, man, uh, you know, you, you get in filled with the spirit of the Lord, man, and just tapping into to what he's got for you. And then the enemy walks in dressed up as a Capitals fan. And it's just, it's just tough. You know, people try to people try to crush your spirit, but you just fight through it in the mighty name of Jesus. But uh, but praise the Lord. But uh, but guys, man, I pray again that your week was indeed awesome. Now remember, guys, to, to help some of y'all fellas out. Uh, uh, Valentine's Day is not Valentine's, which I, for the longest time was like Valentine's. But uh, but that is indeed coming up. <laughs> Somebody said thank you. I think that was uh, Mama T. But uh, but it is coming up. Now, truth be told, fellas, you shouldn't just be loving on your ladies and telling them you love them one day a year. Hello, it should be like every day. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, so make sure you uh, you tap into that. Now remember also, <clears throat> love is not something that we say. Love is something that we do. Right? Love is somebody that we are, if you would. Why? Because God is love. And if God is love and, and uh, God d dwells inside of us, then we too should be acting in love. And we have to remember that love indeed is not word spoken, but real love is action. Right? One of my favorite love moments was, uh, and, and many of you guys have heard this story before, but one of my favorite love moments is when uh, myself, uh, uh, Rob, and Note went down to Myrtle Beach. And uh, uh, it was just a great, great time down there, man. And, and we were uh, ministering uh, at this park. We were asked, we asked where a lot of the homeless were, and we were told this one specific park. So we go down there, man, excited. We go down there to, uh, to love on the uh, beautiful homeless community of, uh, of Myrtle Beach, man, and, and just praying that the Lord would have something awesome and radical in store as we were excited to, uh, to spread the love of Jesus Christ, right? And to yourself, you're thinking, man, what's the worst that could happen? And then uh, as we're there, we uh, uh, stumble upon a lady who was on a, on, on, on a bench and her feet, if you guys remember, I shared this with you a couple years ago, but her feet were so big because they were so swollen and her, I mean, they were just nasty. And uh, I remember, like, we, you know, laid hands on her and prayed for her. And I'll never forget when the Lord dropped it on my heart, man, to anoint and massage her feet. 
So, like when it first happens, you say, Lord, I don't know if you could see her feet. <laughs> but I'm right here. <laughs> so, let me describe what her feet look like to you, Lord. Yeah. They're big, stinky, and nasty. And I don't know her. <laughs> so, I'm cool with massaging Boo Kitty's feet. But, uh, but not so much this kitty's feet. You know what I mean? I don't know her. <laughs> and and I'll never forget, man, getting down there and, and oil and <laughs> like I'm praying that the Lord would use Rob or Note to rescue me. And they're like, praise the Lord, Pastor. Praise the Lord. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not holy right now because I disagree with this. And so I get down there and massage her feet and, and, and with oil and I'm the type of person, now maybe you guys are different, but if I get something on me, see some of y'all are that person because you know where I'm going, or on your clothes, you can't help, <laughs> right, oh my gosh, it's so bad, and I remember, I remember massaging her feet and getting up and like, right, I did, I never thought, and I was praying that the smell of the oil would overwhelm, but it didn't. And and but what was cool, man, is as I'm like, man, Lord, oh my gosh. And like he's teaching my spirit about the stench of my soul, but yet he was willing to come upon me, right? So then we moved on from her and we had this gentleman who had insane amount of, uh, of open sores and stuff on his face, on his arms, on his hands. And uh, I never forget, like, I had the, an amazing holy beard at the time. And uh, one thing that drives me crazy is drool, right? Like Mercy, I had somebody not too long ago spit in my face when I was arresting him and drool gets me. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm talking to this gentleman and um, he's like drooling and he spits when he talks. And I'm not lying to you, it was a lot. And it came like this. And I remember standing there and thinking, I got to tap into Keanu Reeves and matrix this thing. <laughs> so I'm trying to get away from it and it fl and it disappears. I'm like, oh my God, Lord, it is in my freaking beard. And I look over at Rob and his eyes are like this because he knows how I am about drool. So his eyes are like this and I know it's like right here. And I'm like wigging out. And the Lord's like, man, lay hands on him. I'm like, I want to clean my beard. And, and, you know, so you lay hands on him. And, and the cool thing is, is, is as much as sometimes you don't want to, but in the Lord, man, he will have you operate in such a love that she didn't know that I didn't want to massage her feet. He didn't know that we weren't willing to lay hands on him with his, with his crazy amount of, of open wounds. But what he did know and what she did know is that God moved on them in such a loving way that it was amazing that this woman who could barely walk because of her feet wanted to follow us around the rest of the park so that she could begin to be an icebreaker for the other homeless people that were in that park to let them know, hey guys, he just massaged my feet. Like, he's okay. You know what I mean? And like, it was absolutely incredible. Now, I can't tell you that uh, uh, that she was up jumping and leaping and, 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 and dancing and praising the Lord. But I can tell you she was slow in walking and she was limping and she was in pain praising the Lord. But she was up. Right? And, and I can't tell you that that day that my man's wounds just miraculously begin to disappear. But I can tell you that as we met him and he was just in such a crazy turmoil in tears. I can tell you that his tears begin to stop and he wanted to go around with us ministering. Right? And I can tell you that because of love. Now here's the amazing thing of what the Lord does. It wasn't a, but a handful of months later in this church that a gentleman came up to the altar and said, I don't know if you remember, but a handful of months ago, you guys went to Myrtle Beach. And we're like, oh yeah, man, you know, shucks, we remember. And he goes, well, you prayed for a woman in the park with uh, uh, swollen feet. I said, I remember. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
I said, I remember. And he said, man, that was my mom. Oh my God. <clears throat> and he was talking about how her feet are doing much better. You know, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, he, was, he began to speak of, uh, of the behalf of the gentleman with the sores. But it was so cool to see how love continued over X amount of months later to this gentleman coming into this church, knowing indeed by the beautiful people here that he would be welcome and that he would be loved. He too was a homeless individual that he came down here on a trip with some of his friends. But it was awesome to see how those things begin to take place all because of love. Love indeed is not words, but love is action. Amen. We see this in Acts chapter 3. And this is all going to tie in here in a minute. I'm not just telling you that I was smelling my hands. <laughs> but it says, One day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Peter and John were on their way into the temple for, prayer, for a prayer meeting. At the same time, there was a man crippled from birth being carried up. Every day, he was set down at the temple gate, uh, uh, the one named Beautiful, to beg for those who are going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked for a handout. Peter and John, uh, um, Peter with John at his side, looked him straight in the eye and said, Look here. And he looked up expecting to get something from them. Peter said, I don't have a nickel to my name, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He grabbed him by the right hand and pulled him up. In an instant, his feet and ankles became firm. He jumped to his feet and he walked. The man went into the temple with them, walking back and forth, dancing and praising God. Everybody there saw him walking around and praising God. They recognized him as the one who sat begging at the temple's gate, beautiful and rubbed their eyes, astonished. Uh, now, here's what's cool to me, is these guys recognize him as the one who was at the temple gate. And they're astonished. They're like, this is absolutely amazing, right? They're, they're just so like, oh my gosh, thank you, Lord. And the sad thing is, is in today's society, we would have just deemed him as a fake. Oh, the whole time he was at the temple gates, he was faking. Oh, the whole time he's out there begging for money, he actually really didn't need it. Isn't it crazy that our first mindset to go to is this guy's a fake opposed to, man, the Lord just healed this guy. Wow. We see it when people come to the altar. Right? People tell me all the time, well, someone's 18th time at the altar. Wow, I didn't realize you were the altar counter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy that we want to begin to nitpick those coming up to the altar instead of going, Lord, you know what? She's been there 18 times, and I pray that this time it sticks, but praise the Lord, she's at the altar. Right? Believing what they, uh, uh, believing what they were seeing. <clears throat> That's it. Praise the Lord. Oh. Uh, then Matthew 14, 29, it says, uh, uh, come, he said, this is Jesus with Peter, right? He says, uh, come, he says, then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, and he caught him. Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt now, I love this. This is, the silver and gold is one of, by far, my favorite passages of Scripture. It's one of my favorite passages of Scripture to preach out of. Right? Now, here's Peter and John, and there's no doubt that they are excited to tell anyone and everyone about their encounter that they've had with Jesus. And they're excited to tell anyone and everyone that they encounter uh, uh, about their encounter that they've had with Jesus. And like any good, holy Christian, they're on their way to a prayer meeting. Right? That, that they're they're going to start this thing off right because that's what we do as good, holy, and righteous Christians. Right? We always, without a shadow of a doubt, never forgetting, start our day off with prayer. Right? And these two guys who are on their way to church to do this, they have their day mapped out. First is that. Second is this. Third is here. Fourth is there, right? Like their day is completely mapped out. And I can't help but to think as their day is mapped out, God is up in heaven laughing at their mapped out day. Right? Because here's the truth of the matter. The best God encounters we have are first the ones that are not forced. And second, they are the ones that interrupt our day. The best God encounters are the ones that, that interrupt our plans. They put a kink indeed in our system, right? See, truth be told, I could go out and have a God encounter with anybody and everybody that I desire to have a God encounter with, right? But truth is, as great as that is, that's not where the power's at. 
The power is when it is a God-divined encounter. That God sets up this interruption, right? And when we begin to truly walk in this God-divine encounter, when we truly begin to minister in this God-divine encounter, that's when we're going to begin to witness and to be able to partake in and to be a part of the miraculous that will begin to take place. See, the cool thing about a God interruption, about God divine appointments, about God encounters, is <clears throat> I, I, it's, 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 that's what the things that are going to stick. That's the things that's going to begin to change not only your life, but the lives of those around you, the life of those that God has you, uh, 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 for lack of a better term, almost enforces you or forces you to have an encounter with, right? Like I promise you, truth be told, I did not want to massage somebody's feet in a park. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to lay hands on somebody who had sores all over their body, right? But we did, praise the Lord. Why? Because it was a God-divine appointment. It was a God-divine interruption. And the miraculous began to take place, right? I, I, and I love that. Being able to then later on meet this woman's son, right? It's absolutely incredible. Now again, like I said, man, it, it, it's not... When we have these God-divine interruptions, we're not always going to immediately see the miraculous. But I promise you, in those God-divine interruptions, the miraculous is immediately taking place. Because that's how our God works. But to go into this park to pray for, uh, uh, to lay hands on somebody's feet and, and to lay hands on somebody who was riddled with sores, man, wasn't part of my plan today. Now, I don't know about Rob and Note. They, they might have been praying for that. That wasn't, part of, that wasn't part of my plan day. But I'll tell you this much. It was the best part of my day. Amen. Right? That God-divine interruption was the best part of my week. That, that God-divine interruption honestly has been one of my favorite parts of my Christian walk. And here's Peter and John with their day mapped out. But yet here's God getting ready to bless them with an encounter. He's, he's setting his, his foot soldiers up for an amazing interruption. For the divine purpose of making love an action. He's setting up this encounter that will forever change their life. That will forever change this man's life. And truth be told, that will forever change the course of history. Why? Because we're still talking about it thousands of years later. See, a forced encounter, church, is great. Don't get me wrong, but it will slowly fade away. But this God-divined encounters, these God-divined interruptions will be talked about for thousands of years. These two men are on their way to pray. And they encounter a man. They are interrupted by a man, by a lame man. Right? Now, not like lame as we begin to, to deem lame as like a scrub. Right? Like a scrub is a guy who can't get no love from you. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride trying to holler at you. You know what I mean? Like, like he's not talking about that type of lame, right? Like he, he's talking about a man who is crippled, disabled, has no use of his legs. And other translations say that uh, uh, it was his legs and hands. Right? So this man is, is crippled. And there's no doubt that these two guys are walking by him, saw his cardboard signs. Right? Go, you go into Virginia and you got the cardboard signs, right? And this, this guy's signs were probably like, man, don't, please don't walk by me. You know what I mean? Spare me your chains. I have no leg to stand on. You know, any handout would be useful. You know what I mean? So like, like you, can only, you can only imagine like what this guy's signs were. Right? And, and, and here he is, man. And I love, I love Peter and John's response. And he's like, look, look here. Another translation says, he says, look at us. And I love this response. Because ultimately what Peter is saying is he's not just saying, hey, look here. You see this? I know you do. You can't see me. Right? <laughs> But what ultimately he's saying is, hey man, don't look at me. Look at the God in me. Yeah, yeah. Look here. Hey, pay attention. Look at this. Yeah. 
right? And I love this because what he's saying is, hey, look at God. Don't look at your problem. Hey, look at the God in me. Don't look at your problem. Look at the God in you. Don't look at your circumstance. Look here. Look here. And what Peter and John are doing is they are forcing this man who just interrupted their plans. They're forcing this man to refocus. How many times do you need a refocus? How many times do you need a brother or sister to slap you out of your feelings? Yeah. To slap you out of your feeling sorry for yourself. Slap you out of your attitude. Slap you out of your bitterness. Slap you out of your unforgiveness. Right? How many times do we need a brother or sister to say, Hey, look here. Look at the God in me. Opposed to the problem you're in. Look at the God in me. Right? Because truth be told, man, we could all admit, sometimes it's hard to see the God in yourself. And for some reason, it's so much easier for us to see the God in somebody else. But here's what's amazing. When we begin to look here, look at me, look at the God in me, and we begin to see the God in somebody else, the spirit inside of us begins to remind us of the God who is in us. Look at me. Look at me here and I love this and I love this because if we notice that love caused them not to be offended hey hey man, hey guys any handout would do oh, gosh this freaking peasant is talking to us we have a prayer meeting to go to thank you Jesus <laughs> right right like like they're not offended that this man is talking to them. They're not offended that, that, that he's, he's asking them for help. <laughs> You're going to ask me for my... I work. Right? What do you do? Government pays for you. That's why I have to work two jobs. I'm paying for you. That's half a joke. But... Right? Like, like it's absolutely insane. Love caused. Love caused them not to be able to ignore this man. Not to be able to overlook him as if this man wasn't even there. See, that's why it's so important that we pray daily to God to use us in the course of our day and then that we ask God to remove our blinders to those who are around us. See, so many of us, man, at, at times, and if we could all admit it, I know I can, that we will pray to God to use us, but yet then we have no time for people. And unfortunately, some of us have no time for God. But to me, one of the most important things that, that love did in this passage of the scripture is love addressed the man. Love didn't address the man's problem. It addressed the man. See, we live in a society that wants to pamper our problems. You're owed this. You're owed that. You should get Oh, you murdered mommy and daddy? Well, it's because they spanked you. You know what I mean? Like we live in a society that, that it's criminal justice, truth be told. It's justice for the criminal, right? But, but we live in a society that everything is everybody else's fault but ours, right? And, it, and, it's, and it's insane. But this, this is where we're at, right? And, and, and the crazy thing is, is, is like now Lord's asking us to, to allow love to interrupt us so that we don't even begin to deem somebody who is uh, accusing and or blaming everybody else that we're still able to love them. This is how love is, man. And, and as confusing as it is and as hard as it is, that's love. Like, I can't tell you how many times in my life I blamed somebody else. Yeah. I blamed the police, and I blamed uh, uh, this person, and I blamed that person. And I'm still blaming my sister. You know what I'm saying? For, I don't know for what, but I will find something. You know what I mean? But, but it's absolutely crazy. Right? And, and, and here's, here's God who's calling us to love and not to blame. And then God calling us to love those who blame. And every single day, this indeed is taking place. And it's crazy. And love begins to address the man's 
of the man and not his problem. Like if we could begin to penetrate through the soul, the spirit, and the heart of the individual, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they're going through. It doesn't matter the addiction. That's a person. It doesn't matter the crime. That's a person. It doesn't matter the, 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 uh, 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 the problem. That's a person. And we got to stop addressing these things and address the person. And here's Peter and John, and they begin to dress, address the man. Look at us. Look here. And you know this beggar, man. There was no doubt in my mind that he was expecting one of two things. He was either expecting a handout or a tongue lash. Because he knows people either give him money uh, uh, or they walk on by him, right? Like they, they don't really give him the time of the day. Even if they're giving him money, you know that they're just tossing it to him. But love stopped. Love stopped Peter and John. It stopped them dead in their tracks. It stopped their plans. Love refused to allow this man to be ignored. Love gave this man a face. Love gave this man a purpose. Love gave this man a mission. Peter replies, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have is far better than what I don't have. I don't have a nickel to my name, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And this passage has some of the most powerful words to me spoken in it. Right? What I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Because what I do have is far greater than what I don't have. Love. Love, however, did not stop there. And this is the whole point, right? Because love doesn't just tell somebody something. Love isn't just words. Love does. Remember earlier I stated that, that love, we can't just, can't just speak love. We have to be love. Love indeed is an action. We can't just tell somebody to be healed and then do nothing, right? Idiotic Christianity does that. When they begin to blame you because you're not healed because it's your lack of faith, but yet they don't have the faith to pull you up. Yeah, who has the lack of faith, right? Like it's absolutely insane. But this is what takes place. Love isn't just words. Peter and John didn't just say walk. They didn't just tell the man to do something and then go about their day and then come back out of the temple and go, he's still laying there. Oh, you of little faith. Right? Like it's crazy. They didn't just tell the man he's healed and, it did, and then did nothing for him. He needed more than just telling me to walk. I need more than you just telling me that I'm healed. He needed more. He needed love not to say, but he needed love to do. So what did love do? Love extended the hand. See, love became a verb. Love was an action. Love took. Well, I love that. Love took. Peter and John didn't just say, here's my hand. Scripture says that he took yeah. the man's hand. Amen. Right? Like, I love that. Yeah. You're healed. Oh, you can't reach that? Oh, you have little faith. Okay. You only had the faith to get up and walk. Now, if you only had the faith to extend your freaking arm. <laughs> right? <clears throat> so Peter and John, realizing that this man can't get up and walk, Again, one translation says that his uh, 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 feet and hands immediately were strengthened, which tells me that he didn't have the ability to reach out. So Peter took. He took the man's hand. And as love took the man's hand, it shows us that immediately, immediately, he was strengthened. Scripture says that he jumped to his feet immediately. This is, this is powerful. Because one of the greatest things about love, when we love in Jesus, is it has an immediate effect. It immediately heals. It immediately begins to deliver. It immediately begins to set free. It immediately begins to make new. It immediately begins to draw you in. Scripture lets us know that this man then went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and dancing and praising God. Why? All because love was an action. 
love. Like this is crazy. This love that brought a healing. This love that brought a healing and people saw it. Right? And now and now they're filled with, with amazement. Like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Which shows us again that when we love in Jesus and our love becomes an action, it's not just for us. It's not just for the individual. It's for the multitude. It's for everyone around. And this takes place. Why? Because love happened that day. Love forced Peter and John to notice the man. Love did not allow them to ignore them. Love did not allow him to, or them to overlook him. Peter takes the man's hand. And I can't help but wonder if Peter was thinking of the love that rescued him. When, when Peter begins to take the man's hand, if he immediately went back to those, those uh, rough waves and that, that crazy wind during that nutty storm. When he begins to, to think back when he was dying, when he was drowning, and yet there was nothing that he could do, and he immediately begins to remember, love didn't ignore me. Love didn't look the other way. Love didn't deem me as dead weight. No, love reached out his hand and took a hold of me and pulled me back on top of the waters to put me back in the boat. See, when we become like Peter and we realize that we have been rescued by love, we will quickly realize that we will never, ever ignore those who are in the desperate need of rescuing. Love, a.k.a. Jesus, rescued us. He rescues us from sin every day. He rescues us from death. He rescued us from hell. When we look at our nation, our society, this world, it is just freaking riddled with sin, death, and hell. But God, who is love, sent a rescuer whose name is Jesus. And when we begin to grab a hold of this, despite the things that we've done, despite what the, we have done as a society, despite what it looks like at times, Jesus is still all-powerful. Despite what sin tries to tell you, despite what addictions try to tell you, despite what circumstances try to tell you, Jesus still rules. Despite what man wants you to believe and tell you, Jesus still leads. And despite the way you feel sometimes, Jesus still loves. So as followers of Christ Jesus, as sinners who have been rescued by the love of Jesus Christ. We should be compelled as soldiers that we would grab the attention of all of those people who are around us. All of those people who indeed the Lord will allow and or cause to interrupt our day. That they would have no choice but to indeed acknowledge our love as an action to rescue them from whatever dire situation that they find themselves in. It doesn't matter if you agree with them and or disagree with them with the way they live their lives, with the belief system that they have and or what they're doing. I'm not asking you to agree or to disagree. I'm asking you to love despite. Despite that. Despite that, that we love in Jesus, right? You and me can admit, man, we have made some horrible, at least I can, I've made some horrible, crazy mistakes in my life. But yet, even in them, I was loved by the lover of my soul. And he loved me despite. When I was in the grips of hell, he rescued me despite. And then, for some unknown reason, he calls me to do the same to those who are in the same position that I was once in. Right? Love. And, and truth be told, man, this kind of love shouldn't be a, a rarity. It should be common amongst us who call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. It should be common amongst us who call ourselves the church. It should be common amongst us who have been rescued by love himself. So as my worship team comes up and as I close in prayer, some of y'all are tapping your watch because Super Bowl pregame. 
Sanchez. I ask you today, I ask you today, who and or how, who and or how will you turn love into an action? Who and or how will you stop ignoring today to be a rescuer for those who are in dire need? Who or how will you turn love into an action? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We love you, my king. God, we ask that you move in us and on us and through us in a crazy way today. God, that we would acknowledge how our lives have been transformed by love. And God, that we would desire to be your soldiers, your foot soldiers to get out there to a world who is in desperate need of love. God, that we would chase out hate, not with hate, as Martin Luther King would say, but with love. God, that we would chase away sin and addiction, unforgiveness and bitterness with the love of Jesus Christ. And God, as you have saved me, you have rescued me, Lord, help me to desire to do the same for others. God, as I map out the course of my day, as I've mapped out the course of my life, Lord, I pray for God divine interruptions. But Lord, not just that, I then pray that I will be attentive to the very things that I've just prayed. I know you're going to give them. I know you're going to send people to interrupt my day. I know you're going to send people to interrupt our weeks. You're going to send people to interrupt our game plan. But God, then I pray, I pray that we'll be attentive to what it is that you're sending us, to who it is that you're sending us. And God, that our first desire would not be to address the problem, but to address the person. That we wouldn't want people to look at us to get self-glory, but we would want them to look at us, look at me, look here, to show the God inside of us. I have not a nickel to my name. I am not smart. I have many, many issues. But God. Look what God has done in my life. Look here. Look at me. I was wretched and undone, but look at what the Lord has done. I was crippled on a mat. Look what the Lord has done. I was sick with sin. Look what the Lord has done. I had my addictions, but look here. Look at me. Look at what the Lord has done. Stop looking at your problem. Stop looking at your sins. Stop looking at your addiction. Stop looking at your situation. Stop looking at your circumstance. Stop looking at your trial. Stop looking at your tribulation. Look at God. The lover of your soul. You may think to yourself today that you are drowning and there is no doubt that you are. But my God, He walks on water. And He is right there, right now. Not just extending a hand. But like scripture says, he's taking a hold. You might be too weak to hold back. That's okay. He's strong enough to pull you back. And Lord, I thank you today for the many people that you are taking a hold of. That you are pulling up. Why? Because you love us. Is anybody in the house of God today, whether you're here and or listening, and you desire to know Him, to meet this love that radically changes lives, this love that indeed is the action, that you simply open up your heart right where you're sitting. Yep, you got issues. I'm right there with you. Yep, you got struggles. I'm right there with you. Yep, you got sin. I'm right there with you. 
it's hard for you to, to think about the Lord at times due to your situations and your circumstances. I completely understand. But God, God will love you all the way through that. And despite that, so you simply open up your heart right now as he's pulling you up out of these waters because he's taking a hold of you because he loves you that much. I celebrate with you as your life will be radically transformed. Don't worry about what you have to stop doing. Worry about what he's going to do in your life. Watch what he'll begin to mold and transform you into. All because he loves you. Lord, so we celebrate those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life today. We celebrate those who have given their lives over to you today. Those who desire to meet love, the action, you, face to face. Transform them, then use them as you've rescued them to be a rescuer. So we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And our God's baby said... So stand to your feet. We're going to get back into worship. If you desire to have anything prayed for, man, you could sit there. You could stand there. You could stay there. But if you desire to link up with somebody, then understand we would have some mighty people up here who would love nothing more than to pray with you guys. Hallelujah. You have to drop tithes and offerings on your way out. Listen, we love y'all, but please remember that Jesus is madly and passionately in love with each and every yeah. single one of y'all. God Thank bless. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! That was good, Pastor. <laughs>